Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Well, before we do get started, I do want to encourage you to go by our store, store store.greatdetectives.net, where you can pick up all of my audiobooks, ebooks, and paperbacks. Among the uh, releases, we do have the uh, audiobook, e-back, and ebook, and paperback version of my first ever novel, Slime Incorporated. And that is available over at store.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for today's episode of Nick Carter, the original air date, November 14th, 1948, and the title is The Clue Called X. New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Oh, Joe, darling, you can't die. You can't. You're all I have. Oh, Joe. Oh, please, Edna, you've got to get hold of yourself. Hey, uh, Nick, uh, you think there's any chance he'll live? Afraid not, Matty. I doubt if he ever regains consciousness. Oh, poor Joe. Both Nick and I like him so much, Sergeant. Yeah, I know, Patsy. I guess it's better for his wife if he dies. What? Why, Sergeant, what in the world do you mean? Even if the doc saves him, it'll only be for the electric chair. Now, the case of the clue called X. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. When Joe Gibbs used to deliver the Evening Gazette after school, Nick was his best customer. And when Joe grew up and got into trouble with the law, Nick helped him get a parole from the state penitentiary. Then, when Joe married Edna Marsh, he asked Nick to be his best man, and Patsy Bowen, Nick's assistant, was bridesmaid. And so today, at ten in the morning of their first anniversary, it's Nick and Patsy that Edna has come to, because Joe's in trouble again. Joe never did a wrong thing in his life when he was sober, but... When he's drinking, he goes crazy or something. But, Edna, you told me only last week that he hadn't touched a drop since he got his parole. As a matter of fact, the parole board forbade him even to enter a bar room. He didn't either, Mr. Carter. Not until yesterday. And what happened yesterday? Well, we... We had a fuss. Not about anything important, but it was the first time we'd ever quarreled. Oh, now, Edna, stop it. This isn't doing any good. I know. Well... Joe got all upset and he slammed out of the house. That was about two o'clock. Uh huh. He didn't come home until early this morning. Where had he been all that time? I didn't know, but I could see he'd been fighting. There was a cut place on his chin. His new suit was all dirty and wrinkled. He was a pretty unhappy guy. Edna, honey, I'm sorry. Oh, I'd give ten years out of my life if I hadn't gone into Barney's place yesterday. Oh, don't worry about it, Joe. I know you won't do it again. I was to blame anyway for nagging at you. Oh, you're not to blame for anything, not for anything. The cops come here. I want you to remember that. Cops? Oh, you mean because you broke your parole? Uh, yeah, sure. That, that's what I mean. Because I broke my parole. Oh, they probably don't know anything about it. Oh, come on, darling. Drink your coffee. I'll try to clean your suit up. Gee, you're swell. <laughs> Billy, just look at this cold dirt all over it. Blood. Blood. Yeah, from that cut on your chin, oh. I guess. Yeah, sure. Sure, that's where it's from. Here, take your cigarettes and your what? Joe. What's the matter? It's a ring in your coat pocket. A, a ring? A diamond ring. It looks real. But I... I Joe, where'd you get it? Well, I, well this is our anniversary, and I always said I'd... Joe, like, please don't lie to me. This is a man's I'm ring. I'm not lying. I'm... I know you. You stole it, didn't you? No. Oh, you can tell me the truth, honey. It won't make any difference but to me. But I... I'll keep on loving you even if you killed somebody. Huh? Why'd you say that? Say what? Say that about... About me killing somebody. Because that's the way I feel... Oh, Joe, you've got to take this ring back. I can. It's too late. It's I not can. too late, Joe. Look, you can explain to me you didn't know what you were doing. Edna, please. Please leave me alone. I'm almost crazy now. But I don't can't take me. anymore. I'm getting out of here. Joe, don't. You should have known better than to marry a jail first. Joe, come back, please. I'm... Oh, Joe. 
And you don't know where he went when he left the house? No, I I don't. Well, what do you want Nick to do, Edna? Well, I thought maybe if he could find out where Joe got the ring and give it back, maybe they wouldn't have him arrested. But, Edna, you don't know that he stole it. I couldn't have got it any other way. You say he was at Barney's place yesterday? That's what he said. Well, I'll go around there now and see if I can find out anything. Oh, Mr. Carter, would you? Yes. You got a picture of Joe? Yes, I always carry one in my purse. Good. Yeah, here it is. If Joe's in trouble, I'll certainly do whatever I can to help him. Well, let be, folks. Uh, just some information, thanks. Are you Barney? Yeah. What can I do for you? Uh, here, Nick. Here's the picture. Show it to Barney. Right. Can you tell me if that fellow was in here last night? Let's see. Oh, sure. That's Joe Gibbs. Then you know him. Yeah. He works for the company that's been putting in my new sprinkler system. Sprinkler system? You know, one of them automatic things that puts out a fire before it even gets started. Oh. Turns in the alarm and everything. And Joe installed it, is that right? Yeah. Took him about ten days, so we got to know each other pretty good. Did he ever take a drink while he was working here? No. I never seen him take a drink till last night. But he sure made up for lost time then. Uh, did he behave himself while he was here last night? Oh, Sure. Uh, him and some friends sat here right in that there booth, shooting the breeze all evening. Who was the friend, you know? Oh, somebody he met in here, I guess. Guy about my size, maybe 50 years old, gray hair, pretty good clothes. Did he and Joe leave together? I wouldn't know about that. You see, I was only in here from 7 to 8 while Pete, that's my bartender, went out to eat. They were still here when I left. Then we'd better talk to Pete, hadn't we, Nick? Yeah, it might be a good idea. Well, I guess you'd find him at home. He never gets up till noon. Can you give us the address? Well, sure. I'll write it down for you. Yeah, Joe was a nice guy. I hope he ain't in any trouble. I hope so, too. But I'm keeping my fingers crossed. <laughs> well, let me see. I got back to the bar about 8.30. Hey, wait a minute, Pete. Barney said it was 8. Well, that's when I was supposed to be back, but Barney asked me to stop at the drugstore and get him a bottle of that uh, dope he uses on his hair. Well, he uses enough of it. He looked like a wet seal. Yeah, he plasters it on all right. Well, it was all out of it, and I had to run all over looking for the right kind. Barney's awful particular about his hair, you know. All right, so you got back at 8.30. Joe was still there? Yeah, yeah. Him and this other guy was all alone in the place, just like when I left. There's never anybody in at that time of night. Barney's trade don't go for cocktails. Yes, I know. Kind of... Did Joe leave with this other man? Mm-hmm. Just a few minutes after I got back. By that time, they both had too many. Why, this other guy, he was at the place where he was losing things and accusing people of taking them. What did he lose? Well, first it was his overcoat. He claimed I must have lifted it till I showed it to him hanging right on the end of the boot. Well, what else did he lose? Well, and next it was his keys. According to him, they was in his overcoat, and he went through all his pockets looking for him. Hey, wait a but minute. he wasn't. He didn't lose a diamond ring, did he? No. But it's funny you'd say that. Why, Pete? Because that's what him and Joe was talking about all evening. The guy sells diamonds, I guess, and Joe was saying he wanted one to give his wife an anniversary present. Nick, we're on the right track. You don't know the other man's name, do you, Pete? No, but he's got an office in a well boined building. I know, because I heard him telling Joe they'd go up there and look at some rings and stuff. Nick, let's go over to the Wellburn building now. Maybe the man hasn't even missed his ring yet. I hope you're right, Patsy. It's our only chance to keep Joe out of really serious trouble. Why, Nick, isn't that Sergeant Matheson over there talking to that man? Yes, it is. I wonder what the devil he's here for. Well, I'll be doggone. Nick and Patsy. <laughs> hey, Patsy, you're looking great. Oh, thanks. Where'd you get that dress? I like it. Mm. This is the first time I've worn it, and Nick didn't even notice. It's swell, but uh, um, isn't it a little bit too long? That's the new look, Sergeant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look, Sergeant, if you've got any more questions, let's have them, will you? You got me out of bed to come down here, and I'm losing a lot of sleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Nick, this is the night elevator operator. I was just asking him a few questions. Don't let us stop you. Now, look, young fella, you say Mr. Forster and this young guy came in about 9 o'clock, huh? Yes, sir. 
I remember because Mr. Foster had lost his key, and I had to let him in his office with my pass key. Lost I his key? See. Nick, it must lost be the same key. Key. Uh-huh. Let's hear the rest of it. Uh, that safe in Foster's office, was that uh, where he kept his diamonds? Yes, sir. He had the safe installed when he moved here three years ago. And Mr. Foster was a private dealer in diamonds, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, look, uh, give me the description of the fellow with him. Well, uh... I'd say he was about uh, 23 or 24. Yeah. Close to six feet tall. Uh, rather poorly dressed. Nick, it was Joe. Yeah, I know his first name was Joe, but... Hey, do you two know the guy? I think so, Matty. It's probably Joe Gibbs, a friend of ours. Great, then you can help me find him. I can take you to where he lives, but... Hey, what's Joe done, Matty? You wouldn't be here if it were only a robbery. Well, it was robbery, Nick. Your friend Joe got away with everything in Foster's safe. Maybe twenty, thirty thousand dollars worth of diamonds. But, Sergeant, you're on the homicide squad. Sure, Patsy. That's why I'm here. What? Because Foster put up a fight and this Joe Gibbs beat him to death with a bookend. <laughs> Here, Matty. Right. Joe lives in that tenement above the fruit store. Okay, Nick. Not that I expect him to be sitting home waiting for us. Nick, I just can't believe that Joe would ever have done a thing like that. Oh, no? What did he get sent up for the other time? Well, he got mixed up with bad companions, and they talked him into driving the getaway car while they stuck up a nightclub. Uh. But I don't think Joe even knew what they were doing. Neither do I. That's why I helped him get his parole. We've both known Joe ever since he was a kid, Sergeant. And we both like him so much. Now, who's it, Patty? Back in this doorway. You too, Matty. Yeah. Well, what's the matter, Nick? There's Joe now coming across the street. Oh. Let me talk to him first, will you? Yeah, sure, but... Uh, Wait, what? here he is. Hello, Joe. Huh? Oh, Mr. Carter, Miss Bowen. Joe, this is Sergeant Matheson. A cop? What'd you bring a cop here for? He wants to talk with you, Joe. What about? About murder. Huh? Okay. So you got me. But you ain't gonna keep me. Joe, wait. Stop. Stop, we're on fire. Joe, look out, that truck! <laughs> In this desperate attempt to escape the law, Joe Gibbs is struck down by a heavy truck as he tries to cross the street. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to the case of the clue called X. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It is a few minutes later. Edna Gibbs is kneeling beside the unconscious body of her husband, Joe, where he lies in the street in front of their tenement house after being hit by a truck while attempting to escape arrest. He's dead. Mr. Carter, Joe's dead. No, Edna, he's still alive. The ambulance will be here in a few minutes, and we'll know what his chances are then. Oh, Edna, don't. Joe's going to be all right. I know he is. I don't care what he did. Oh, Joe, Joe. Hey, uh, Nick. Yes, Matty? Come over here a minute, will you? Okay. What's on your mind? You uh, think there's any chance for him? You'll have to ask the doctor about that. I doubt if he ever regains consciousness. Uh, better if he don't, I guess, for his wife's sake. If the doc can save him, it'll only be for the electric chair. <laughs> This is Forster's office, Nick, but I don't know why you wanted to come up here. I wanted to see for myself what really happened. Is everything just the way you found it, Matty? Yeah, nothing's been touched, except that the body's been taken to the morgue, of course. Mm, there must have been some fight here, the way all these chairs and things are knocked over. Yeah, it must have been quite a battle. Didn't the elevator operator hear it? No, Nick, he said he didn't hear a thing. Did he take Joe down again later? He says not. After Joe killed Forster, he must have walked down the stairs. I see. And the medical examiner says Foster was killed within an hour of the time Joe and Foster came up to the office. Right, yeah. Uh, here's the pictures of the body. Let's see. Now, uh, this one is the whole room. Here's a couple of full-length views of the body from different angles. And uh, this one is a close-up of the face. You can see where the book and... Yeah, wait a minute, man. Hmm? What are those marks on Foster's face? Oh, those little cuts like an X? Yeah. The medical examiner said they might have been made by a ring when Foster was hit. But, but Joe wasn't wearing a ring. Well, they came up here to look at rings, didn't they, Patsy? Yeah. He might have been trying one of them on. Oh, that's possible, but... Hey. Look at that. What uh, is it, Nick? This wall safe. 
One of the old-fashioned kind that opens with a key. Yeah, that's where the diamonds were, but you can see it's empty now. What I'm getting at, Matty, is that the keys are still in the lock. Several of them on this one ring, including the door key. Well, what about it? Foster said he lost his keys, remember? That's right. Yeah. The elevator operator had let him in with his pass key. Oh, Nick, look, the guy was drunk. The keys were probably in his pocket all the time. Or, well, maybe he left them in the office when he went out. This door has an automatic lock. Yes, Manny, there's an explanation for everything, I know. But it seems odd that so many things have have to be explained. Oh, Nick, stop it. This case is closed. Maybe. What does this door lead? Uh, that's a closet where he keeps supplies, I suppose. Imagine you think that you... Hey, that's funny. What uh, is Nick? Stuff in this closet. It's all crowded together in a jumble on both sides. But the center is clear. And here on the floor, just inside the closet door, there's a spot of blood. Well, so what? They probably fought all over the room. Yeah. This closet's been painted recently, too. Even the underside of this shelf. Nick, what are you twisting your neck like that for? Trying to see the bottom of the shelf. Uh-huh. There's a greasy spot on it. Well? And here's another one on the back wall directly opposite. I think I'm beginning to figure this thing out. Now, look, Nick, if you're off on some wild idea of proving Joe Gibbs is innocent just because of a couple of grease spots... That's exactly what I'm trying to do, Matty. Oh. What's the latest report from the hospital? Well, Joe's still unconscious, but the doc said he thought he was going to pull through. Be a long, hard fight, but... Can we talk to him? Well, the doc said he could give him a shot or something to bring him around long enough for a few questions, if it was really necessary. Good. I think it is necessary. Let's go. Oh, Nick, okay. can't I wait till Joe's stronger? No, Patsy, I'm sure now Joe isn't guilty, and I want to hear what happened from his own lips. Maybe that'll tell us who really did kill Foster. That injection should take effect in a few seconds, Sergeant. Okay, Doc, thanks. Hey, Matty. Come on. Look at that cut on Joe's chin. Yeah, like an X. The same as we found on Foster's face. It's already beginning to heal. Why, it couldn't have been made by that truck. That only happened a couple of hours Nick. ago. Yeah. He's opening his eyes. Joe. Joe, can you hear me? It's Nick Carter. Yeah. I hear you, Mr. Carter. Joe, tell me the truth. Did you kill Henry Foster? I... Oh, what's it, you? Sure I did. Uh-huh. But, Joe, why? Not for the diamonds. You were never a thief. I I wanted to get a ring for Edna. I always promised to want I guess that was it. I don't know. Okay, Joe. Better not try to talk anymore. It's funny. I don't even remember fighting with him. But... You don't remember it? No. Last thing I know, we were sitting in Barney's, talking about diamonds he had in his office. Me saying I wish I could buy one for Ed. And then you went up to the office to look at him? I guess so. Because when I come to about five o'clock this morning, I was laying on the floor there. I knew I'd been fighting again. You mean from the condition of the room? Yeah, and my jaw was sore where he'd sock me. And I seen him laying there. Dead. Go on, Joe. That's all. Got down the stairs without anybody seeing me and went home. Didn't even know I took the ring to Edna found it in my pocket, and... And... You better not talk anymore, Mr. Carter. All right, Doctor. I found out all I need to, anyway. Mr. Carter, would you and Miss Bowen please kind of look out for Edna after... Don't worry, Joe. You just take it easy and get well. Unless I'm mistaken, you'll be taking care of Edna yourself for a good many years to come. <laughs> Barney. Hi, folks. Business seems a little dull this afternoon. Yeah, there's never anyone in this time of day. Hey, what'd you find out about Joe? I think everything's going to be all right for Joe. Hey, that's swell. You see, Nick thinks that somebody stole Mr. Foster's keys when he was here yesterday. Huh? Wouldn't have been hard to do, Barney. Foster's coat was hanging outside the booth, wasn't it? Sure, but... And someone might have overheard him telling Joe about all the diamonds he had in his office. And that someone could have decided to take the keys and go up there and get those diamonds for himself. Ah, that's crazy. Nobody was here except them two. The joint was empty, just like now. You were here, weren't you, Barney? 
What are you getting at? Why aren't you wearing your ring, Barney? What ring? The one that left a mark on the second finger of your right hand. Uh, oh, that. Why, uh, it got too tight. Why? You have the ring here at the bar? Well, sure, it's back in my office. I'd like to see it if you don't mind. Why should I? Come on, back this way. The um, ring doesn't have a big X on it, does it, Barney? No, it's one of them signet rings. Gold with the initials B.G. Here's the office. Step in. Okay. Oh. Inside for you, sister. You, you hit him. Sure, the blackjack is just the thing for taking care of Snoop. Oh, Nicky, you all right? Get away from him until I get his rod. Ah, a shoulder holster, huh? So you're the one who killed Foster. <laughs> Maybe that'll learn you to keep your trap shut. Oh. Well, how do you like my office? Office? Why, this is a... It's a storage room, sister. Nice thick walls and no windows. You'd stay here forever and nobody would ever know. You aren't going to keep us here. No, I ain't going to keep you here long. But first I'm going out in the bar and put a few nickels in a jukebox. And turn up, turn it up loud. Just to be sure nobody hears the shooting. The... That's right, baby. Because I'm coming right back to take care of you and your nosy friend. For good. As Barney leaves the storeroom, locking the door behind him, Nick lies unconscious and unarmed helpless to protect himself or Patsy from the coming attack. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Clue Called X. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Locked in the almost soundproof storeroom of a tavern called Barney's Igloo, Patsy frantically tries to rouse Nick before Barney can return and kill them both. Nick, open your eyes. Please, Nick. Oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, what happened? When you turned your back, Bonnie hit you with a blackjack. Here, let me help you up. Oh. Uh. My head. Oh. Hey, what happened to my gun? Barney took it. He, he's coming back to kill us, Nick. We better get out of here. Uh, but we can, Nick. The door is locked and there's no window. Yeah. He said he'd be right back. And that was almost five minutes ago. Maybe a customer came in and he's waiting till the place is empty again. Oh, Nick, don't just stare at the ceiling. You've got to think of something. That's what I'm doing, Patsy. I think I've got it. Oh, good. Here. Yeah. Help me pile some of these beer cases under that little metal rosette. The what? Up there in the middle of the ceiling. It's an automatic water sprinkler, the kind that goes into action when the temperature reaches a certain point. Oh, Nick, this is no fun. Hurry up, Patsy. If Barney gets back before we're through, we'll be... There. I think that's enough. Now, let me hold onto your shoulder while I climb on top of these cases. All right, but... Careful, Nick. I'm all right. Okay. Now, if I don't have a match. Yeah, here's one. Oh, Nick, I don't know what you're doing, but... I'm getting ready to give us both a shower bath. A what? Holding this match under this sprinkler outlet should provide enough heat to... Nick, it works! And the alarm bell's ringing! That ought to attract plenty of attention. In a few minutes, this place will be swarming with fire. Oh, Nick, you're wonderful. Barney won't dare try anything now. You bet he won't. Ooh, that wood is cold. It's freezing. Sorry, Patsy, but just remember, we're making it plenty hot for Barney. Achoo! Uh, 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 Thank you. Well, it's all over, Patsy. After the police got him to headquarters, Barney made a complete confession. He even told them where he hid the rest of Foster's diamonds. I bet nobody would have ever suspected him. He hadn't left those stolen keys hanging in the lock of that wall safe. Well, he didn't expect Joe and Foster to arrive so soon after he did. When he heard him at the door, Barney had just got the safe open. And the only place he could find to hide was the supply I, closet. I, uh, He's in there. Thanks. So that's why the stuff in the closet had been shoved over to the side. Sure, Barney pushed them aside to make room for himself. In those grease spots under the closet shelf and on the back wall were from Barney's hair? That's right. Barney says when Joe opened the closet door to hang up Foster's coat, he hit him on the jaw, and Joe passed out without even seeing who hit him. So it was Joe's blood on the floor of the closet. Mm Mm-hmm. Foster saw him do it, though, and that's why Barney killed him. Then he planted one of the rings in Joe's pocket to make Joe look guilty. Well, that reminds me. What kind of a... Uh, uh, Gesundheit? Uh, never mind. I skipped that one. Hmm, excuse me. What 
kind of a ring was Barney wearing that made those X-shaped cuts on both Foster's and Joe's faces? A skull and crossbones. It was the crossbones that made the X. Hmm. How very appropriate. Yeah. Well, I figured that the chances were that only someone in the bar could have stolen those keys from Foster's pocket. And only someone with greasy hair could have left those spots inside the closet. So you suspected Barney, especially considering that Pete said there wasn't anyone else in the bar at that time. And when I saw that mark on his finger where the ring had been, I was practically certain. Nick, will Joe have to go back to jail for violating his parole? No, no, I don't think so, considering all that's happened to him. And he's going to get well? He'll be as good as ever in a few weeks. And this time, he's going on the water wagon for good. Oh, man, I guess the only permanent damage was that done to my new look. Your what? My beautiful new dress. Oh. After being soaked by that sprinkler, that dress looks like a bathing suit. <laughs> it's not funny. Well, maybe not, but... Uh, Nick, what's the matter? Uh, I think that sprinkler system gave me a call, too. <laughs> Go <Gesundheit. laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleansers. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Hi, this is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. Um, the title actually references another old-time radio show, uh, The Man Called X, which is a fantastic uh, mystery spy drama starring the great Herbert Marshall, which uh, we will get to eventually. Um, well, on to some listener uh, comments and feedback. And uh, we do have a comment from Wes Regarding episode 1776, uh, The Case of the Wrong, Mr. Wright. A good story with a nice twist, but, uh, writes West, but I was bothered by a small logical error at the start. Someone was pushing the old lady's wheelchair while simultaneously holding their hands over uh, her eyes. That suggested two pr people or probably one person with the four arms. So I suspected the Hindu god Vishnu at first. Well, that would definitely be a challenge for Nick, uh, who does it, who did at least in this episode prove he was human by getting a cold. Um, I hope you have enjoyed Nick Carter, but we are actually near the end of the series in terms of episodes that we have left. Now, Nick Carter did continue on the air till 1955, but we only have three episodes left. So coming in four weeks, we're going to have a mystery special as over two weeks, we're going to bring you an adaptation of one of the uh, landmark uh, works in uh, mystery uh, detective fiction, The Moonstone. And that will be coming to you for two weeks in uh, four weeks time. So just be uh, sure and plan on listening to that on Thursdays. Uh, in the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one.